to this service of Holy Communion for the 15th of November, which comes from the Church of St. John the Evangelist in Aberdeen. Our readings today are challenging. The scripture leads us to the theme of judgment. So I encourage you to listen carefully. Listen with your spirit and with your heart. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God is love and we are God's children. There is no room for fear in love. We love because God loved us first. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. God, our Father, we confess to you and to our fellow members in the body of Christ that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. Forgive us our sins and deliver us from the power of evil for the sake of your Son who died for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. God, who is both power and love, forgive you and free you from your sins. Heal and strengthen you by the Holy Spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Almighty God, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the light of the world. Free us from all that darkens and ensnares us and bring us to eternal light and joy through the power of him who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. An Old Testament reading from Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the earth and the world were formed, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, Turn back, O children of earth, for a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday, which passes like a watch in the night. You sweep them away like a dream. They fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. For we consume away in your displeasure. We are afraid at your wrathful indignation. You have set our misdeeds before you and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone. Our years come to an end like a sigh. The days of our life are threescore years and ten, 
or if our strength endures, even fourscore. Yet the sum of them is but labour and sorrow, for they soon pass away, and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath, and your indignation like those who fear you? So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament reading for today is 1 Thessalonians 5, 1-11. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day, We are not of the night or of darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us, not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, as indeed you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, The master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave! You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him 
and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. Praise to Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's parable from St Matthew's Gospel is concerned with judgment. It is a parable about being measured and assessed of some who are rewarded and some found wanting. And although we make judgments about other people all the time, how they behave, how they dress, what they spend their money on, their values, we really don't much like being judged ourselves. And yet we all come to significant moments of judgment, appropriate assessment of how we are doing. Today's parable of the three slaves or servants given money by a master who then departs for a while to leave them to it and then returns to assess how they have done is a well-known parable. The parable of the talents is so named because the money left with each of the servants was a measure of money called talantan in Greek. So this parable could be about how we use our money, but it is not. And because the word talent has for us another meaning, as in gift or ability, then it could be a parable about making good use of the abilities that we have been given in life. But it's not really about this either. So let's look again at what we have here. A master has three slaves or servants. To each of them, he gives vast wealth. A talent was a huge amount of gold, a measure of solid gold coinage, way beyond the capacities of any ordinary person to earn or make. Although the three servants are given different amounts of gold, they all have excess. So the first point is this. The master in the parable has huge resources and is very generous and trusting with these. The master gives generously out of his resourcing, resources, trusting each of his slaves his servants. As we look at the parable, we see that at its heart, the story is heading towards the response of the third servant, the one who has been given one talent. The day of reckoning has come. He appears with dirt on his hands and his shoes. He is carrying a shovel. He has been digging up something that he had buried. And when he speaks, his voice and words are full of fear. He knows that what he has been given is very precious. And in fear that he might lose it, he is unable to take any risks. So he buries what he has been given in the ground. This is a story about gift and risk, about something significant given in great generosity by someone with enormous resources 
and about a recipient who is not freed by the gift, but incapacitated and overcome by fear. So then, what do these talents represent, do you think? Do they represent a share in the kingdom of God? Do they represent faith? Do they represent spiritual resources? Do they represent the love of God? Maybe the talents represent all of these things, the riches of heaven shared with each of us. And, as in the parable, when we count what God has given us, although some clearly seem to have more than others, it is in fact the case that we are all deeply loved and have way more of heaven's resources at our disposal than we actually need. We are all rich in the resources of the kingdom of heaven. Nevertheless, there is no avoiding the end of this parable when Jesus tells us that the worthless slave is thrown into outer darkness where there is wailing and gnashing of teeth. In the preceding parable of the ten virgins, five are shut out of the banquet. And in the parable that follows, those that have been sorted as goats from the sheep make their way to eternal punishment. This has been a theme throughout Matthew's Gospel. It is meant to disturb us and cause us to think. Is the prospect of wailing and gnashing of teeth meant to motivate us to good living. Those of us motivated by the grace of God will find this difficult. Or is this parable, like so many others in this gospel, a way of Jesus provoking us to consider what we are doing with our lives, a way of asking us to look carefully at how we are living? We do well to think about these questions from within the Gospel of Matthew itself. At the end of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says that a wise man will build on the words of Jesus. So, listening to the teaching of Jesus and putting his words into action will lead to a life that can withstand the storms of life, whatever they might be, but will also lead to a deep involvement in the kingdom of God as it breaks into this world. This shifts the day of judgment from being focused only on the last judgment, as in one of those large paintings in churches, which until the Reformation were what the faithful could stare at as they attended church week by week. Judgment is ever with us, from the trials of life through to the secret blessings of the kingdom of God. This parable about a servant who buries what is given to him, might provoke us to look again at what we have done with the teachings of Jesus. Have we buried them, or are we living them out as disciples of Jesus in the world? So again, returning to the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus introduced the theme of coming judgment, we remember he said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. This comes in the context of his teaching given to his first disciples and to us. 
directions on how to live a life that sits well with the kingdom. So if you take the teaching from the Sermon on the Mount and use it as a measure, how are you doing? Are you still a lamp on a stand? Are you still salty or have you lost your flavour? Are you angry towards your brother or sister in Christ or have you made peace? Do you go the extra mile? Do you give to everyone who begs from you? How are you doing praying for your enemies? How is your secret praying and fasting and almsgiving? Are you still searching for the kingdom? Are you seeking and knocking on the door of heaven? All this reminds us that the teaching of Jesus was intended to disturb, intended to provoke us to reflection. The intention was not that we bury what we are given in a panic, but trusting in the generosity of that given to us, lean into the great gift of life and live it well live it like Jesus. Then, on every kind of judgment day, we might hear the words, well done, good and trustworthy ones. You have been trustworthy in a few things. God will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one substance with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we pray for the world and all people, for an end to war and suffering, for reconcilers and peacemakers for those most affected by climate change and those who work to prevent it, for those who govern us and represent us in this community and this country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are sick, for those who are waiting for results or change, for those who grieve, for those who suffer prejudice or abuse, 
for those suffering from coronavirus and its effects, and for those who ask our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church and all people of faith, for all leaders and servants of the church. We pray for Anne, our bishop. We pray for those preparing for baptism and confirmation. In the Anglican Communion Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the Church of Ceylon, the Bishop of Colombo Decimat, Father Dostanza Rodrigo, and the Bishop of Kuranagala, the Right Reverend Kerthasiri Fernando. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died, for those we have known and loved but see no longer, and for all whose lives and deaths are known only to you. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. We pray for ourselves and for each other, for our needs and concerns, for those things which are particularly on our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, accept these prayers said and unsaid for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus came preaching peace to those who were far off and peace to those who were near. We meet in Christ's name. Let us share his peace. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become the cup of our salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Worship and praise belong to you, Father, in every place and at all times. All power is yours. You created the heavens and established the earth. You sustain in being all that is. In Christ your Son, our life and yours are brought together in a wonderful exchange. He made his home among us that we might forever dwell in you. Through your Holy Spirit, you call us to new birth in a creation restored by love. As children of your redeeming purpose, we offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven singing the hymn of your unending glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and thanksgiving be to you, most loving Father, for the gift of your Son born in human flesh. He is the word existing beyond time, both source and final purpose, bringing to wholeness all that is made. Obedient to your will, he died upon the cross. By your power, you raised him from the dead. He broke the bonds of evil and set your people free to be his body in the world. On the night when he was given up to death, Knowing that his hour had come, having loved his own, he loved them to the end. At supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, it is broken for you. After supper, he took the cup. He offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, 
it is poured out for you and for all that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and this wine, that overshadowed by his life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us who are baptised into the fellowship of Christ's body, to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love, until at last in your new creation we enter into our heritage, in the company of the Virgin Mary, the Apostles and Prophets, and of all our brothers and sisters, living and departed through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, unite us in this sign. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. God of infinite mercy, we thank you for Jesus our Saviour, who feeds his people and gives them eternal life. Though we cannot consume the gifts of bread and wine, we thank you that we do receive Christ's saving presence, the forgiveness of sins, and all other benefits of his passion. Grant that we may continue forever in the risen life of our Saviour. Amen. Give thanks to our gracious God, whose mercy endures forever. Living God, increase in us the healing power of your love. Guide and direct us that we may please you in all things for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.